chasing after Jesus than chasing anything or anyone else. Amen. for us, but because of who he is. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because 
Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh is my provider. Give God praise in this house. Come on, we can do better than that. We worship God for who he is, not because of technology, not because of what he's done for us, but we simply worship him for who he is. Father God, we thank you for this time of worship today. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, God, that we are here with you right now. For you said where two or three are gathered in my name, you would be in the midst. And so, God, we thank you, God, for spending this time with us today. And, God, we, we release the burdens and the cares and the concerns and the heartaches uh, of our lives and of this world to you right now. And, God, in turn, we ask for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace for our situation, peace for our families, peace for our health, God. We ask for the peace right now. God, we thank you again, God, for the gathering of believers in this house. God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to assemble uh, as your body in your son Jesus Christ's name. And so, God, as we continue to worship, uh, we know that as our praise goes up, as our worship goes up, God, we are expecting that you will send a blessing back down. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Give God praise again. Amen. Before you go to your seat, uh, you'll find in the back of the seat in front of you, we're going to do communion right now. And, uh, and so in the seat uh, in front of you, you'll find some communion cups. If you need one, just raise your hand and the usher will come by uh, to see you. We celebrate communion because this is our opportunity to remember what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, did for us so many years ago on Calvary's cross. Um, that he, he gave all that he had himself, all that he had, uh, so that we could have the opportunity to eternal life.
The Bible records uh, from Paul in Corinthians, he said, let a man examine himself uh, before he partakes of uh, communion. And so I just, even though we prayed, I want us to take this opportunity just to bow our head, close our eyes for a moment. And whatever it is that maybe uh, you uh, have not rectified with God, maybe something, and if you're like me, something maybe this morning you need to get forgiveness for. Amen, somebody. Right? Um, this is your opportunity to clear that slate before we go to God during this time of communion. And let the church say amen. I record on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed. He gathered his disciples in the upper room. Um, and there he instituted what we know is the Lord's Supper and communion. The Bible says that he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. You might eat. Peel back the second layer slowly. The Bible says that also he took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, which I will. And as we know, has been shed for you. He says, as often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. You might drink. And Paul says to conclude, he says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. And here's the key part, till he comes again. Can we give God praise for that this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. They'll be coming around with uh, buckets for you to drop that in. I want to say good morning to everybody here at Cross Church. Good morning. Happy to see you guys. And we're so glad to, that you're here to worship with us. Here at Cross Church, we simply are a church that loves God and loves people. And one of the ways that we show that love is that we take a few moments to get out of our seat, welcome each other, and uh, say hi. So find somebody you didn't come with, right? And uh, introduce yourself, say good morning, and welcome to Cross Church. membership class following um, immediately after service over in the children's area uh, uh, starting July 18th. We have membership launch on July 18th. And then we have a kids movie night on the 30th. That'll be at the end of this month. 
I preferred it when I gave announcements without reading them. Um, but I'm trying to think, do we have anything else? They're going to stop hiring me for this eventually. Um, <laughs> um, but the final, uh, the final last we have is that now we're going to move into our time of giving. We can do better than that. We are about to move into our time of giving. All right, there we go. Um, we believe in giving here at Cross Church because we believe that nobody gives better than God. And it's really just a chance for us to give back a little bit of what he has given to us. Here we have four ways to give. We have the giving boxes on either side. We also have uh, give online at crosschurchdenton.give. And then we have the text to give, which is, oh, I don't know the number, 940-222-4522. And then we have the cash app, dollar sign, Cross Church Denton. All right, and now we are about to continue our sermon series, What God Hates. I'd like you guys to give PV a big round of applause coming back after his brief break. He's going to bring the word to you again this morning. Amen, amen. Give Damar and a great big hand again. Him as well as TJ, who have been uh, bringing the messages over the last, I believe, five Sundays. Amen. And so I'm excited uh, to be back and uh, want to let them know how much I appreciate uh, them giving me the opportunity just to take a little time off uh, uh, over the last uh, month. Um, so uh, as I as I jump in today, I think I um, I, I spoke to the team beforehand. Um, as we were doing our pre-service prayer, and I said, man, there's just a lot of things going on. Just in a few conversations uh, with people this morning, um, it just felt like uh, there was a lot of things that have happened this week, a lot of things that have uh, gone on. And so, I, you know, I told and encouraged the team to say, hey, we're here to release that stuff and then um, and, and to encourage one another. Well, and then service started, and then I see things kept kind of going on and all that. So it's, it's, have it been that kind of week for anybody else this week, amen, just things have been going on, things that are uh, unexpected, some things that, uh, some challenges maybe, um, that you maybe have been dealing with. Um, well, I want to encourage you that uh, in the house of God, this is the, a, a great place uh, to relinquish that, and then just in these, these moments to just spend this time with God and allow him to uh, encourage uh, us. So uh, let's do this. Just look at the person sitting next to you and say, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to tell the other person next to them, it's, on the other side of you, it's going to be all right. It's going to it's going to be our it's going to be all right. It's going to it really it really will. It really will. So um, we're, in a, we're in a sermon series uh, entitled What God Hates. Um, and again, we've uh, been going through this. We, we've been looking at the seven deadly uh, sins. Uh, we talked about uh, greed. We talked about wrath on last Sunday. I'm missing one. We talked about pride. I probably didn't want to remember that, right? Um, we talked about those three. Now, today we're going to talk about the sin of envy. Everybody say envy. Um, just a quick story. When I was uh, real, real little, probably about three or four uh, years old, I have one brother who was uh, uh, much older than I. So about when I was about four years old, he was a teenager. And uh, so uh, he uh, had a girlfriend. I don't know who she was, but she had given him this little stuffed animal. It, it kind of looked like Winnie the Pooh. Um, and so she had given it to him. And so it was in his room and I saw it. Um, and, and me being a three, four year old, I wanted that stuffed animal. Now, now mind you, I, I had plenty of stuffed animals. I had plenty of toys, right? But it was something about that particular one, um, that just really drew my attention. And, and I had my own, but I wanted that one. I wanted his. So uh, the story goes, this is basically what happened one day when I, I, I and, and if you had an older sibling, you know the rule is they don't want you in their room, right? They already tell you, get out of my room, right? So I waited uh, for uh, a day and a time that he wasn't going to be there. And I marched myself in his room and I grabbed that bear and took it back to my room. So when he got home, he realized that the bear was gone and he came in my room and he began, you know, doing big brother things, the little brothers, right? He began to terrorize me and was trying to take the bear uh, away from me. And my mom just said, just said, just leave him alone. Let him have the bear. 
And so, as you can tell, I was a spoiled younger child, right? right? Um, and so, he just left it, left it alone, and I had the bear. Friend, that envy is something that plays in all of our lives, uh, and it can be very dangerous if we're not careful. By simple definition, envy simply means to want something that belongs to somebody else. To, to want or to have something uh, that somebody else has. It is possibly the most deadliest and the most nasty and ugliest sin of them all. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it because it is the sin that starts in the heart. So uh, if you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter, one, chapter 4, because envy starts in the very beginning. It's one of the sins that starts straight out uh, uh, in the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse uh, 1. Uh, we're going to look at verse 1 through, I believe, um, 13, 13, uh, 14. Um, if so, if you have your Bibles, uh, Genesis chapter 4. Verse uh, 1, if you have it, say, I've got it. it. If you need more time, say, hold up. hold up. All right, that's okay. We'll wait on you. We're not in a hurry. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. It's also on the screens as well. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. All right, it says, now Adam had sexual relations with his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a male, a male, a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for harvest, Cain presented some. Everybody say some. some. That's going to be important later on. Some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best. Everybody say best best portion of the firstborn lamb from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Everybody say, watch out. watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. You must do it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into a field. Let's go for a walk, Abel. Let's talk. Let's have some brother time, right? And the Bible says, it continues, and while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel. And killed him. And afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? And we know that famous statement. I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's guardian? Am I responsible for my brother? And the Lord said, what have you done? We'll stop right there. We'll finish the rest as we get into the message. God, we thank you for the word, Genesis chapter 4, this, this story about these two brothers, Cain and Abel, and we thank you for this example to show us uh, the impact of envy uh, and what it can do in our lives. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears so that we can hear, so that we can receive, so we can understand what you have for us today. Your son, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, envy typically works in the areas of wanting uh, possessions positions, or people. I, I, I want what you have, I want to do what you do, or I want to have who you have. Amen? Amen? And it typically works in that way. Now, I know as I was studying this, I, 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 I know many of us, like me, were thinking, well, what's the difference between envy and jealousy? Because we kind of hear them kind of interchangeably. Envy and jealousy. What's, what's the difference between envy and jealousy? Well, envy is about wanting something and resenting someone because they have something I don't have. I want what they have and I resent them because they have it and I do not. Jealousy is rooted in the fear of I have something and I'm afraid to lose it. In other words, if I see Joy talking to, the, to, the, to uh, another man, 
Joy is my wife. I might get jealous. Why? Because I'm afraid that he might try to take her. I know, I know that's not going to happen, but, you know. <laughs> but in, in my weakness, I might get afraid that, that he might try to take her away from me. Envy is when I look at somebody else's wife, come on, and I say, oh, I want her. I'm not satisfied with what I have. I want what they have. Friends, envy is very dangerous. It's like a cancer because, as I said, it starts on the inside. It starts in the heart, and it affects everything on the outside. We all heard the saying, green with envy, right? You ever, you ever wonder why they, they, they say that? Green with envy? Because envy makes you sick, produces sickness on the inside, on the inside, it produces something that eventually begins to corrode who you are on the inside, and the effects of it begin to show. Remember when you get sick, somebody, uh, uh, I guess last night, got a little sick outside and left something for us. We had to clean up this morning, right? When, when, when something happens on the inside and sickness starts to infect you on the inside, what ends up happening, right? Eventually, it comes out on the outside. Friends, that's what envy does. Mark chapter 7, 20 through 23, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, it is what comes from the inside that defiles you. Because, because what, the, what the issue was is that the Pharisees like to put on the show. They like to say, oh, the actions that you do uh, is what makes you right or wrong with God. Jesus takes it a step forward. He said, before you ever get to the action, it starts in the heart, right? It starts in the mind, right? You got to think it. You got to feel it. And then guess what? Then you decide to do it. He says, the, the, it starts on the inside. He says, because from within, out of a person's heart, everybody say heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. So the first thing we have to see here is that the root of envy is a dissatisfied heart. Root of envy is a dissatisfied heart. It is a heart that is not satisfied, not content with what I have, who I am, and my current circumstances, and I believe that my satisfaction and everything that will, will produce the joy and the happiness in my life will come when I have what you have. Friends, Cain was dissatisfied with God's response to his offering. Remember the story, Cain comes and the Bible says he brings some of his of his fruit, some of his produce to, to the Lord. Uh, and, and, and it says Abel brought his best. There's a big difference between some and your best. God rejected Cain not because not because of exactly what Cain brought, but it was the heart by which Cain brought it, that that was what was God rejecting. And Cain was dissatisfied with that. The Bible says he got angry. Can you just think about this for a moment? Imagine getting, like, you getting angry in an in attitude with God. Um, he, you know, everything. But Winston has a little bit of a dissatisfaction issue right now, right? He's just not satisfied. Put him in the pen. He doesn't want to be in the pen. He put him in his cage. He definitely doesn't want to be in this cage, right? Put him on the leash. He doesn't want to be on the leash. Why? Because Winston believes that the only way he can be satisfied is to be free to do, and you know what he plans on doing, wherever he wants to do it in the house, right? Right? He's completely unsatisfied. But what Winston doesn't realize is, is that the pen, the cage, and the leash is to help him to be the best dog that he can be, that it ultimately is for his good. God wasn't trying to hurt Cain, but what he was trying to get Cain to see is, Cain, you can do better than that. God's not trying to hurt us sometimes, but sometimes we have to understand when God rejects us in, in certain instances that God is saying, you can do better than that. Friends, here's the problem with dissatisfied, the dissatisfied heart. We live in a world that thrives on dissatisfaction, 
right? The world's always playing on your dissatis- dissatisfaction, right? You get a new car, you're cool with that car till you see another car, <laughs> right? Yep. See, see a commercial for another car. You, you're cool with your house until you find out your friend got a new house, uh-huh. right? You, you get, you, the world plays on it. All the commercials play on the fact. You weren't hungry five minutes ago. You see the commercial, now all of a sudden I'm dissatisfied. I'm, di- I'm not content with my state, right? I, I need that burger, that piece of whatever, whatever it is, right? The world plays on our discontent and makes us believe that I only can be happy if I have that. Friends, the world will keep us chasing after the pearl. Who are the Joneses anyway? Anybody met them? The Joneses? I feel sorry for the people with last name Joneses. Like, how did they get a bad rap like that, right? And the, the Jameses, the, the Jacksons, like somebody else, right? The Joneses. I, I'm sorry, I digress. Think about this. We're not satisfied with what we have. We want what others have. That's where envy comes from. But let me ask you this question. But are we willing to do what they did to get it? I'm not satisfied with what I got. I'm envious of what they have. I want what they have. Am I willing to do, willing to put in the work to get what they have? Let me, have, let me, let me give you some examples. I want that position on the job. They just got the promotion. I can do all of that that they can do. I want that position, right? But am I really willing to put in the time and the work required for that position, right? Oh, I, I, I mean, I love my spouse. Who got quiet, right? I love my boyfriend, girlfriend, right? But, but, but I want theirs, right? But am I willing to be the spouse necessary to have a relationship like that? I, 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 want, I want that house that they live in, but am I willing to pay the mortgage? See, see what I'm saying? A lot of times we're envious of things. Cain was envious of what 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 Abel received from God, the acceptance. But Cain wasn't willing to do what was necessary in order to receive the acceptance himself. Sometimes what we have to see is, is that God sometimes wants us to have what is the desires of our heart. He's saying it's available, but are you going to be willing to do what's necessary to get it? I want the, I want the windows of heaven to open up and pour me out a blessing that I will not have room. Y'all, yeah, somebody knows where this is going. I will not have room enough to receive it. But am I going to be willing to pay my tithes? Am I going to be willing to give back what God has asked of me to give to him? I want what they have, but I can't seem to do what's necessary to get it. Look at what God says to Cain. Verse 7. Well, y'all can't see it because I know the computer just went out again. Then, You know, here's one of those things. I was just looking last night about buying a computer, and I guess that was God's way of telling me we need to buy it. Amen. It's confirmation. Amen. <laughs> this Sunday morning is confirmation, right? Verse 7. Verse 7 says, says, God says to Cain, you will be accepted if you do what is right. What I'm trying to see, get us to see here is sometimes we're so focused on the, on the dissatisfaction in our hearts and we want what somebody else has when all we have to do is do what's necessary and we might could have it ourselves, our own, right? Okay, dissatisfied heart. Here's the second thing. The root of envy is a dissatisfied heart. The effect of envy is, a, is relational murder. The effect of envy is relational murder. Envy usually focuses on people that we are close to, that are in our general vicinity, people that we have relationships with, spouse, friends, family, uh, our neighbor, co-worker, because these are the people we generally 
compare ourselves to. Envy is a relationship killer. Let me say that again. Envy is a relationship killer. Why? Because when I want what you got, guess what? I'm, gonna, I'm going to do everything to either belittle you for having it or try to, to tear you down so that I can get it. It's a relationship killer. We stop seeing the individual for who they are, and we start only focusing on what they have that I want. We, 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 we start then to move from dissatisfaction to then starting to resent them, to starting to resent the fact, well, why do they deserve that, God? Well, why do they get to have that? They know better than I. I know I'm not the only one that said that before. They know better than me. They, 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 in fact, I know some things. <laughs> I can tell you they know better than me, God, because I, I can pull out the receipts, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. We, we, we begin to resent them. You see where relationships start to crumble? Because I, I resent you. I forget about who you are, and I resent you for what you have that, that I want. Then we start to commit character assassination. Because somebody was like, well, PV, I know the story. Cain killed his brother. I've never killed anybody. I hope no, everybody's not killed him. Amen. <laughs> right? I hope we're good with that. Amen. Right? No, no, we might not have physically done that, but we sure have gone down the road of some character assassination, haven't we? Come on, character assassination. We, we, we convince ourselves that it's their fault that I don't have and they have. And so what I begin to do is I begin to criticize them and begin to chip away at their character. I start saying, well, she would be pretty if her nose wasn't so big. <laughs> oh, come on. Y'all know some of y'all done been petty like that. Come on. Right. We, we'll begin to say things like he'd be cool if he wasn't so corny. Right. We begin to chip away at their character. She only with him for his money. Right? Right? We we'll begin to chip away and 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 then then we'll start to we'll start to we'll start to pass that on to other people. And you know, whenever the sentence starts with, do you know? <laughs> did you hear? You know where it's going, right? Did you did, did you know did you hear? Right? There was a, something happened in, in, in social media world. I'm not going to use names. It was some famous, it was some people, one person on television, one person a social media person. Uh, it happened. One person decided that they wanted uh, a person with minding their business, doing what they do for their, for their relationship and their family. Uh, they've been blessed by God, and they wanted to do something uh, uh, to bless their spouse, right? Well, somebody in entertainment decided that, that they, they didn't think that that was legit. They didn't think that that was uh, um uh, a good thing to do because of what? Their personal experience. They, they had a bad experience with, with a spouse, um, and so they projected all of that onto this person's re- relationship. And so what you started to see was the envy of, of well, since my, since my relationship didn't work out when I did that, well, of course, yours can't work out um, because uh, when you do that. So they put, this person has a national platform on television. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about, right? I'm not going to use no names. Right, but, but they have a national platform. I don't watch the show, um, but, but they have a national platform. So they put that out for millions of people to see. Well, the other person, basically, they responded uh, via social media, and they basically responded in, I mean, it was like, the, it was like a godly love beatdown. You know what I mean? Like they, they like projected all the love of God uh, back at them. And, and, and they, wanted to, they wanted them to know, like, you don't have to, that there's something dissat- that's dissatisfied in your life. I love you. I'm gonna pray for you, but but there's something there's something that 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 you're dissatisfied in your own life and in your own relationships that you that you wanted to come at at me and wanted to try to destroy my character, my family, and the character of my family and what we're trying trying to do. Pink, we got to be careful about the character assassinations because it's so easy now, right? It's so easy. We, 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 be, we be assassinating each other's character every day, and, and, and it's become so easy that we don't even know that's what we're doing. Cain let that envy root inside of him. 
God told him, he said, Cain, Cain, why are you angry? He said, Cain, you, you, why are you so upset? He says, Cain, you, you, you just do the right thing and let it go because if not, watch out. Everybody say, watch out. Because the enemy is at the door. He says, Cain, you got to subdue it. Friends, we've got to check ourselves in those moments when we commit in character assassination. Oh, there's some, there's some, there's some family members we done, we done crucified. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty, Damari. There, there's some, uh, there's some friends that we no longer in relationship with because we've crucified them. Some coworkers, right? We, we've, we've assassinated some bosses, right? Because it's all the boss' fault, right? It's not our fault. We, 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 we still employees, right, that, that we've, we've assassinated. Friends, envy just doesn't kill your, your relationship with others, but it will kill your relationship with God. Verse 9, verse 9. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where's your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. He says, now you are cursed and banished from the ground which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. For from now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain replied to the Lord, he said, my punishment is too great for me to bear. He said, you have banished me from the land, from others. Get this. And then he said, you have separated me from your presence. It'll kill our relationship with God. So here's my last point. How do we rectify envy? What's the remedy? The remedy for envy, there's a lot of things. We try to keep it focused so we can close. The remedy for envy is focusing on him and less on them. Focusing on him and less on them. Psalms 37, 1 through 6. David has a problem because he's like, I see my enemies. My enemies are are living it up. I'm living bad. God, this is not fair. But then David, David has a a shift moment in his life. And and God says, don't worry, verse 1, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For the grass, for like the grass, they will soon fade. Like spring flowers, they will soon wither. This is what God says. Trust in the Lord and do good. Everybody say "Do do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper Verse 4, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. Friends, simple formula. How do I remedy envy in my life? It's focusing on him by simply, one, trusting him. Saying, God, that I, I have complete confidence in you, that I am completely relying on you, for the provisions for my life, that I'm not worried about what they got. I'm just worried about what I need. I'm worried. I'm only focused on what it is that you are doing for me in my life. Then it says, do good. In other words, instead of envying them, I'm going to treat them good. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate with them when they get that promotion. Somebody like, nah, I can't do that, PV. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to celebrate. I'm going to bring that housewarming gift, even though I wanted the house, but they got it. I'm going to bring that gift to them and, and show them the love of God because, because I don't want an envious heart. He says, I'm going to delight in the Lord, meaning I'm going to put my life in, in and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to park it in the abiding love of God. That means that, that the only thing that satisfies me is my relationship with God. I'm going to make that the primary thing in my life. I'm going to give my heart to him. I'm going to let him have control of my life. I'm going to live his way, meaning that no matter what I want, chances are he's going to want something different. 
and I'm going to be okay with that. And then lastly, he's, I'm going to be still. We're all busybody people at. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the only one, right? Busybody people. I'm going to be still. And I'm going to wait on him. I'm not going to look at them, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to wait. I don't care. Oh, they got a new house. I'm waiting on him. Oh, I, I'm single. They got married. I'm, I'm waiting not on him. I'm waiting on him. Oh, they got a promotion. I'm just going to keep working. But while I work, I'm going to wait on him. Bank can come. Prince. There's so many times and there's so many small ways that we're letting envy take control of our lives. And, we, and, and, and God's warning to, to Cain is the same warning to us. He says, he says, the enemy is crouching at the door. He wants you to take that envy in your heart. And he wants you to turn that from inside out to destroy relationships in your life. But here's the great thing. Even what we destroy, God can heal and put back together again. And, And so as I close, the question for us today is, how is God calling you to change? How's he calling you to change? Maybe that change is the change in your focus, where where you are directing your attention, your eyes. Maybe the call is, the change is, I got to unplug from some stuff because I'm I'm plugged into too many things and all these things are making me want more and want things that I shouldn't want and be unsatisfied with what what I have. Maybe I got to change some, some relationships in my life. I'm running in an envious circle. I'm running in that petty circle that likes the character assassinate. Whatever that change is, God is asking you today. He said, make that change. Allow me to heal the heart. Allow me to transform you from the inside out. So as we close... If you're here today, and the first change, the biggest change is, one, I need to have a relationship with God. Maybe I've never had one. Maybe I've kind of had one, but I haven't been practicing. I need a relationship with God because because without that, I, I I can't begin to trust. I can't begin to delight. I can't begin to live because I don't have that relationship. Maybe that's the change that you need to make today. I, I need to commit to a relationship with God. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're saying I'm struggling with this envy and I'm struggling not only with that, but I'm struggling with a lot of other things in my life. And, and, and I feel so much like I'm lacking PV and I just feel like I can't get my head above the water. And so out of that, that envy begins to, to creep up. I just need prayer. I need help. We want to pray for you. Whatever the change is, as we stand on our feet, I'm going to be here. Others will be here. But, man, let's make the change today. Don't, as we worship, don't leave with that burden that you came in with. When God says, all you got to do is give it to me. So as we worship, someone here today want prayer, want to come to God, want to know how I can give my life to Jesus. Maybe you don't know how that works. We want to talk it through. But as we worship, let's make the change that God is calling for us to make today. Anybody here today? Redemption's here where your blood was spilled my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross. Bring me to my
God, for these blessings. And we thank you, God, for this example this morning of envy uh, in the life of Cain and Abel. And God, I pray, God, that uh, whatever dissatisfaction is felt in hearts right now, I pray, God, that they will, they will understand the only thing that can fill the void is through a loving relationship with you and your son, Jesus Christ. So, God, I pray, God, that, that we become encouragers and not assassins. Uh, that, uh, that, God, that we keep our eyes focused on you and not others. That, God, that we can transcend the, the things of this world, God, and know that, man, there is so much more to life than what we have, what we wear, who we're with, or where we live. God, I pray, God, that we can, as your word says in Hebrews, that we can fix our eyes on your son, Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you for this time of worship. Um, we pray, God, that we have honored you, and we pray, God, that everything that has been done here has been done for your glory and for your kingdom's sake. In your son Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Give God praise again. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we do apologize for all the technical difficulty uh, this morning, but uh, we, we made it through it, and, and, and God is still good. Uh, but again, as you leave today, uh, there are gonna, there's going to be a situation this week that's going to creep up that that envy in your heart is going to begin to kind of swell. Um, that character assassination opportunity is going to kind of come up. Man, as God told Cain, let's, let's, let's capture that. And let's turn that um, into something uh, that God can use for his glory. So have a great week again. And uh, we love you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for all you do here at Cross Church. God bless you. And we'll see you on next Sunday. <laughs>